To start first on his first major argument, the government would propose that the economic, the economic uh, potential generated by allowing women to enter fields or incentivize them to enter fields of studies typically dominated by men would be perhaps the most tangible and the most realistic uh, point for the house to incentivize us. Um, this creates a sustainability for the country as a whole to have more workforce, more minds, more, I suppose, uh, great matter into the fields of study. It would essentially create more venue uh, for economic development and prosperity. And this government, the government team does not see, uh, they only see that uh, the nation would benefit, would be, dis be at a disadvantage if the nation loses out on its female demographic. Uh, the second major argument that the government would like to elaborate on is that academia as a whole would benefit from a non-gender perspective. Uh, this, would, this would veer discourse on science. Uh, on dialogue on science to a more representative uh, direction. Uh, we see this in politics as well, where it has been a traditionally dominated uh, field society for men, and this has created a certain bias to favor more men into politics and create this kind of male-centric versions of looking at politics and how political institutions work. This will also ex uh, expand to social sciences, on sociology, on anthropology, where a lack of a female perspective greatly damages the academic integrity of the field of study that is being able, that's going at the moment. Um, thank you. Uh, is this allowed? Yes, I shall. Incentivize is relatively synonymous with the verb encourage, but has a more tangible uh, uh, method into how they would encourage this. Incentivize, there's economic incentivization, which is essentially giving money to the individuals or the actors to do something that we are trying to encourage them to do. So one understanding, one supposed most tangible understanding of example of incentivization would be monetary grants for women to enter fields of study dominated by men, perhaps grant scholarships for women who are trying to get into fields typically dominated by men in politics or STEM or social sciences. Um, this is the government's understanding of the term incentivize. also present our arguments, right? Um, as the government has defined, defined incentivize here include encouraging using monetary grants or scholarships. Um, first, they talk about the economic potential of having more minds into these fields. Mind you, what we're doing here is not encouraging more people to join this field. We're encouraging um, a certain gender to join a field dominated by the other genders. This is in no way um, increasing the number of minds that is studying in this certain field. Um, the university house only have so many slots for engineering or kindergarten teaching or politics. So if uh, more people want to join these fields, it only means that the best people will get chosen. right? So by incentivizing a certain gender to join the other, it does not make it um, that there are more avenues for development and that, as they have stated. They also say that um, the workforce will be higher and then there will be more avenues for development. Well, they didn't really clarify on how this would be achieved, and I don't see in any tangible ways just encouraging men to do women's job or women to do men's job would magically open up avenues for development. The second um, argument that they have is the perspectives. Um, they say that, well, a certain fields are very dominated by male and 
uh, a certain are very dominated by females and we are missing out on these perspectives. Well, perspectives are a rather vague idea and it is not always necessary in jobs that, for example, engineering, which are precise calculations or very methodological. Uh, okay, I would like to come to our argument, which um, we have two main arguments today. The first one is that incentivizing a certain gender to join the other gender, in a way, is actually gender discrimination. And the, the second argument is that um, if we really do this, we are only addressing gender inequality on a very surface level. I'd like to go to our first argument. Well, what is the goal of studying a field? What is the goal of an educational institution? It is to educate. It is to bring out the best in its people. It is to educate the brightest minds in order to serve the society. So why are we assessing these people on their genders? We should be looking at them on their ability, their academic pursuing uh, ability, their, their ability to learn uh, and to contribute for the country. Why are we incentivizing people just because it is traditionally done by male or traditionally done by female? This, is, this makes it very unfair for both the people already studying um, the major, for example, males who are doing engineering, they are not getting incentivized even though he might be very brilliant, or a female who is not doing engineering, but her friends are being incentivized while she is not, even though she herself is brilliant. Right, um, so this is not gender, it's just not a good indicator for, um, for us to assess people. Right, um, and well, we suggest that we should incentivize people who show extremely strong ability in their chosen fields. The normal way that we're doing scholarships right now, we're awarding scholarships to people with ability, with uh, high academic standards. Uh, our second argument is that it only addresses the problem on a very surface level. Indeed, um, if we now incentivize females to join engineering, her male engineering peers will start to look down on her, saying, you are only here because you're incentivized to do this. And it is very unfair for the already very competent females. Now she will be looked down on, even though she has no reason to uh, be looked down on like this. And um, they will still be discriminated, even though they are admitted for the course, even though they are encouraged by the government. They are going to be discriminated by their peers and their professors. Uh, my member of the opposition will explain more on these points. Thank you very much. Uh, how, how much time exactly do I have? Yes, okay, thank you. Um, expanding on my uh, Prime Minister's arguments and in response to the uh, leader of the opposition team, I would like to first uh, review a few of, uh, expand on my Prime Minister's points. For, so firstly, um, by incentivizing individuals to participate more actively in fields of study. We are encouraging, uh, for instance, in politics, we are encouraging a more diverse and we're creating better and uh, we're creating better solutions that will appeal to the interests of more people. I would like to ask this question. For instance, are a group of men fit to make decisions that will affect women and their bodies and their rights as humans. Um, I think that a group of men, a group where the majority are men, are not fit to do so simply because they do not, they are unable to take into all the considerations that um, a woman, a leader who is a woman will be able to take. Also I would like to add uh, a few points. By intensifying individuals to take up fields of study typically dominated by the opposite opposite gender, we are creating a better, safer, and a less discriminatory work environment. The leader of the opposition men mentioned earlier that by, by doing so, uh, we might lead, it might lead to more women being discriminated because they will say, oh, you're here be because uh, you are a token acceptance, you are not here based on merit. But in fact, the situation, um, the work environment right now, there exists discrimination against women that that sort of discrimination already exists by encouraging more women to come into fields like STEM. We are allowing we are allowing more women to 
have the opportunity to lead more women to have the opportunity to change the different discriminations, change the different things and stereotypes that are associated to different genders in a particular field. Um, there has been research that shows uh, conducted into the different um, to the different workings of Silicon Valley, and it has been shown that women are seriously discriminated in the world of tech. Why? Because there are so few women in the world of tech that they're so, that that they're unable to become leaders. They're unable to. They're, they're, there's an insufficient number of leaders in the field that will create an environment that will say that will raise their hand and say, "Oh, I want to make this workplace better, safer, make women more comfortable in."